Boss Monk. The biggest question of all is, why hasn't the Green Party been able to break through? We're at the point in, of our society that Debs was at. Why or how can we make a new part like Abe, new party like Abe was able to enter? Well, you mentioned Eugene Debs, and I don't know if you can see with the question up there. I'm wearing my Eugene Debs Hall t-shirt. I spoke there a couple weeks ago. Oh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. And uh, this is in Buffalo. They have a nice little hall in, uh, in the city, inner city. And uh, so, you know, I spoke there about our campaign and our petition drive and, you know, the issues facing us. Um, so why haven't we been able to break through uh, to the point where Debs was at? Well, there's a difference on the left. Back then, going through the farmer labor populist parties, the Greenback Labor Party, the People's Party, through to the Socialist Party, people on the left understood, and this is like Socialist Politics 101, that we have to have class independence from the capitalists. That means independence from their parties, the Democrats and Republicans. That was just like an axiom. And since the mid thirties, when the communists said, we're gonna support Roosevelt and in other countries support the so-called liberal capitalists against the fascists, uh, that has been the position of most of the left today. You know, the Democratic Socialists of America, the largest socialist group, if you wanna call it that in the United States, is oriented toward the Democratic Party. And as I you know, said in another context when I was running for president, they get lost in the sauce because they end up supporting liberal Democrats, not socialists. And so the socialist message and the idea that it's an alternative to what we have, you know, a fundamental alternative gets lost. Um, so that's one reason, you know, the broad left, the progressives from liberal to revolutionaries um, are oriented to the Democratic Party, most of them. And that was not what was true in Deb's time. So the socialists, you know, they were able to elect thousands of people in the first 20 years of the 20th century and hundreds, you know, through to the mid thirties. Um, a lot of them were local, some state legislatures, a number of members of Congress. Um, and aside them, beside them were other independent left parties like the Progressive Party in, in uh, Wisconsin, the Farmer Labor Party in Minnesota, local union-based labor parties. And between them, you know, by, 1934, 35, as they were going into the 1936 election, and there was a movement for a national labor party within the new union movement. Um, there was two governors, four senators, Minnesota and Wisconsin, and 13 members of Congress from those two states, along with hundreds of independent left candidates elected to municipal office and a few state offices around the country. <coughs> And 1936 was the, was the turning point. And, you know, so we've got to get, you know, tell the left, you know, the left is not the same as the, you know, liberal reformers of capitalism. And, you know, we got to get out and build this independent party. So why or how can we make a new party like Abe, Abe Lincoln was able to enter? Uh, you know, what they did, again, was build from the bottom up. Uh, starting with the Liberty Party against slavery, 1840, 1844, and it became a broader coalition uh, for the most part. Liberty Party was still around separate, but a lot of its people went into the Free Soil Party. And then finally, the Republican Party. And then the Republican Party started electing people to local, state, and federal office. So by the time Lincoln ran in 1860, the Republican Party was the largest caucus in the Congress. So but when he won, he wasn't really a third party candidate. He was really a first party candidate. But they built that from the bottom up over, you know, pretty rapid period, basically 20 years from the time the Liberty Party first came out to be the party against slavery. Um, and then it accelerated in the 1850s. But that's what we got to do. I mean, the idea that we can get some big personality and have him run for president, it's going to change everything. That person will be isolated if we haven't built from the bottom up, built a base built, uh, you know, elected officials that would support uh, a president who really wanted to change things. So that's how we do it. Uh, we got to, you know, declare our independence from the capitalist parties and then build the alternative from the bottom up. I think that's 
really what's got to be done. The other thing, and this is you know something I've emphasized since the presidential campaign, because it became so obvious in the course of that campaign, with the Republicans becoming an extremist party, exemplified by Trump, most people on the progressive side of the political spectrum just felt they couldn't afford not to vote for Biden, even though they weren't enthusiastic about him at the least. Some of them really didn't like him at all, but they still voted to get rid of Trump. But with that extremist party out there, and, and what we have is a winner-take-all system. So it's single-member district winner-take-all for legislatures and just winner-take-all for the single-seat executive offices. That creates a situation where the vote splitting spoiler problem becomes a problem. And it's getting worse because the Republicans have become not just a conservative party, but an extremist party. So I think the other thing we need to do to have a multi-party democracy, uh, to have a political system where the Green Party uh, can take its rightful place like it has in many countries, is to change the electoral system. So that means ranked choice voting for those single seat executive offices and proportional ranked choice voting for multi-member districts for legislative bodies. And so I think, you know, we got to build from the bottom up. Uh, we got to declare our independence, but we also got to change the electoral system. And the latter is something we've been doing. I mean, ranked choice voting has, has really increased in a lot of jurisdictions in the last few years. Um, we went into 2020 with something like 24 jurisdictions with uh, ranked choice voting, and now it's it's approaching 60. A lot of that since that election. We won some in that election, some, you know, referenda to change uh, voting in, in some municipalities, and we've been winning more since. Uh, I think people are hungry for that, and uh, we got some big cases of ranked choice voting, even if they're flawed, like Alaska and New York City and Maine, as well as many cities. So I think we can build upon that. And the key thing is we got to not settle for single member district ranked choice voting, but we want multi member proportional ranked choice voting for legislative bodies. That's what will change the system. So we become a multi party democracy in which the Greens have their rightful place.